Hi adventurers! Today, we're embarking on a journey through the enchanting country of Jordan. From the ancient city of Petra with its iconic treasury carved into the cliffs, to breathtaking natural desert landscapes through Wadi Rum, to walking through the vibrant city of Amman, Jordan has it all and has to be one for your list. This one only cost me five days out of the office. I took a seven day group tour through Jordan in May of 2023, a great way for an introduction to a country and a chance to make some new friends. You already know the drill, hit that subscribe button, stick that out of office on and let's check it out. Jordan is located in the Middle East, bordered by Saudi Arabia to the south and east, Iraq to the northeast, Syria to the north and Israel Palestine to the west. It has access to the Red Sea in the southwest, including the Gulf of Aqaba. The most common route in to explore the country from London is via the capital Amman, and you can expect a flight time of around four to five hours from London. Before you arrive, many tourists purchase a Jordan Pass online, which allows you free entry into a number of the tourist sites. It's around 80 pounds for this, and we found it totally worth it. Our journey begins in the capital city of Jordan, Amman. Amman is a vibrant and historically rich destination that offers a blend of ancient wonders and modern attractions. We start by exploring the local markets common in Amman across the city, called souks. Souk Jara is an open-air market held every Friday during the summer months. Browse through a variety of stalls selling crafts, clothing, street food, and plenty of groceries. For a more authentic local experience, head to the downtown area and explore the Souk Al Bukhara or Souk Al Juma, where you can find spices, textiles, and traditional goods. The number one tourist destination in Amman is probably the Citadel, a hilltop archaeological site that offers panoramic views of the city. One of the most prominent structures within the Citadel is the Temple of Hercules, an impressive Roman temple that once stood tall. The area of the Citadel dates back to the Bronze Age, and structures have been built and destroyed here many times throughout history. Only a few columns and remnants remain here today. This is the place though to go get your pictures and unobstructed views of the city. Still inside the Citadel complex, we head to the Jordan Archaeological Museum, which is a treasure trove of historical artifacts. The museum houses a remarkable collection of artifacts from various periods, including the prehistoric, Nabataean, and Roman eras. Here you can find statues, pottery, ancient manuscripts, and more. Nearby, you'll find the Umayyad Palace Complex, which served as a residence and administrative center during the Umayyad period, which was around the year 700. The palace's domed audience hall and the intricately designed residential quarters offer a glimpse into the architectural beauty of the time. This palace is still technically part of the citadel and is also covered by that Jordan Pass. You've got great panoramic views from here, too. As you might have seen through some of the shots, Amman is quite hilly and so when you are done with the citadel, it's either a taxi back to the city centre or a walk down the hill. It's about a 20 minute walk downhill to the Roman theatre. Located at the foot of the citadel, the Roman theatre is a well-preserved amphitheatre that dates back to the 2nd century. Take a walk through history here as you climb its steep stairs and imagine the grand performances that took place here. The theatre often hosts cultural events and concerts, so check the schedule for any upcoming shows. This theatre used to sit 6,000 people. At the bottom of the amphitheatre, there are also a couple museums you can visit. While exploring, you might come across the Lover's Steps, where you'll find couples leaving love blocks along the guardrail up the stairs. Then check out Rainbow Street, which is home to the Instagrammable artifacts hanging over the streets and is in a lively and trendy neighborhood. Because Jordan is a largely Muslim country, alcohol is not available everywhere, but you can find bars that sell it, and this is a good place to go for that, including nearby Ceiling, which has a lovely rooftop bar in the summer. Just make sure to be respectful. It is worth learning about the religious traditions here, including a visit to the Grand Husseini Mosque, as well as the impressive architecture of the King Abdullah I Mosque, one of the largest mosques in Jordan. For the latter, non-Muslim visitors are welcome to explore the mosque and the beautifully landscaped gardens surrounding it between Saturday and Thursday in the mornings and around lunchtime. There is an entrance for visitors, and remember to dress modestly and remove your shoes before entering the mosque grounds. Amman is a paradise for food lovers, offering a wide range of traditional and international culinary delights. Don't miss trying Jordanian dishes like mansaf, a traditional Jordanian lamb dish, falafel, hummus, and kunafa, which is a sweet pastry. One of my favorites was makluba, 
which is a rice dish that translates to upside down and consists of meat, rice, and fried vegetables. I also really loved exploring the city center at night. The city really comes alive and you can find lots of good quality and affordable food places in the side streets. We even got to watch fresh bread being made before having a great dinner at Shahrazad restaurant. We also got to try a traditional dinner at a local's home. You can see some more of the upside down rice here, but also a range of traditional dishes, including musikan and hummus and falafel. And of course, top it off with some traditional sweets at Habiba, an institution that's been around since the 1950s. Make sure to try the kunafa, the signature sweet. Kunafa is a popular traditional dish made with spun pastry and soaked in a sweet sugar base syrup. Despite alcohol not being huge around the country, Jordan is also producing its own wine. Or go for a traditional ice cream called Booza at Bekdash. The ice cream is made by pounding the ingredients in a container and the staff make this process entertaining, as you can see, by making a great little tune. If you have other food recs for Jordan and Aman, please let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the Citadel and want to see some more impressive ruins, you can take a day trip to the ancient city of Jarosh, known for its well-preserved Roman ruins, some of the best outside of Italy. Jerash is a little less than an hour outside of Amman. Wander through the well-preserved colonnaded streets and see the beautifully preserved Hadrian's Arch, the majestic Oval Plaza, and the Temple of Artemis. No trip to Jordan is complete without a visit to the famous Dead Sea, the lowest point on Earth. The super salted waters make it so that you can float effortlessly here. You can also try a mud bath, renowned for its therapeutic properties. Ceramics have played a significant role in the artistic and cultural heritage of Jordan throughout history. Jordanian ceramic artifacts showcase exquisite craftsmanship and diverse artistic styles, and you'll find a lot of workshops along your way. 130 kilometers outside of Amman, you'll find Karak Castle, considered by many to be one of the greatest crusader castles ever built. Karak Castle is open to the public and you can take guided tours or do it self-guided and informational signs will provide insights into the castle's historical context and the stories of the people who once inhabited its walls. Karak Castle is a 2000 year old settlement, but the castle as we know it has been around since the 12th century. Okay, maybe a bit funny to recommend a Turkish coffee while exploring Jordan, but it's worth it to try this local favorite. It's strong, it has a distinct texture, but you'll find Turkish coffee places dotted around while road tripping across Jordan. In the very south of Jordan, there's a city called Aqaba that sits right where Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Israel, and Jordan meet. It's on the coast of the Red Sea and is a popular destination for those looking to explore the Red Sea's beauty and engage in various water activities. The Red Sea is renowned for its vibrant marine life and crystal clear waters and stunning coral reefs, making it a paradise for snorkelers and divers. Little Petra, also known as Sikh Albarid, is a hidden gem located a few kilometers north of Petra, Jordan. Often overshadowed by its more famous neighbor, Little Petra offers a unique and intimate experience for visitors seeking a quieter and less crowded exploration of Jordan's ancient treasures. Think of this as a warm-up to the real Petra, but well worth a visit. And next, what you've all been waiting for, one of the world's most awe-inspiring archaeological sites, Petra, also known sometimes as the Rose City. Petra, located in southern Jordan, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. When you visit, this is where that Jordan Pass will really come in handy. A ticket to Petra alone can be £55, but it changes based on how many days you want to buy a pass for. The history of Petra dates back to around 312 BC, when it was established as the capital city of the Nabataean Kingdom. This civilization flourished due to its strategic location along important trade routes, allowing it to become a prosperous center of commerce. Making your way from the entrance through the narrow winding gorge is spectacular in and of itself. It's called the Sikh, and it takes probably about 45 minutes to walk through. As you make your way through, the treasury will suddenly reveal itself in all of its grandeur. The treasury is undoubtedly the most famous structure in Petra. This is the one that you always see photos of on Instagram. The intricately carved facade stands over 40 meters tall. You can also make your way up towards the monastery, another iconic structure. It stands high on a hill and offers panoramic views of the surrounding landscape. The royal tombs, the great temple, and the street of facades are just a few examples of the remarkable architectural achievements that await exploration within Petra's boundaries. 
In addition to these structures, there is plenty of hiking that you can do within the park and complex as well. Most people who visit Petra do the main trail and often the monastery trail, which take you around the main sites, but there are some more off the beaten path trails as well if you have more than a day to explore. Like much of Jordan, the best time to visit for weather will be in spring and autumn, but those are also likely when you're going to find the most crowds as well. No Jordan trip would be complete without seeing the beautiful desert of Wadi Rum, a desert almost the size of New York City. It's almost like entering another world, and there's a reason why Wadi Rum is known as the Valley of the Moon or gets compared to Mars. After a friendly game of volleyball, we hopped on a 4x4 jeep and embarked on our desert safari, getting a glimpse at the towering sandstone cliffs, massive natural arches, and of course, the vast red sand dunes. Wadi Rum is about two hours south of Petra, so you can combine this part with your trip down to Aquaba. Many places offer desert camping so that you can either get a budget or luxury glamping experience in the desert and a chance to sleep under the stars. Just make sure you bring cash out in these parts. And then tuck in and enjoy the sunsets as we say goodbye to this week in Jordan. Overall, I found Jordan an easy place to travel through, but as I was solo, I was grateful to be with a guide and like-minded solo travelers in their 20s and 30s. It was fun to have a good mix of adventure and exploration, and it also just made the logistics of travel easy and allowed me to focus on relaxing and enjoying what Jordan has to offer in a week. I thought the group trip was totally worth it this time around, but if you've traveled to Jordan solo before, please let us know what your top tips for that are for anyone else watching and for our future travels there. And with that, I was off home to plan the next trip. We've got a lot more videos already filmed, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.